Uh, I'm very happy to be uh, um, uh, in Brazil one more time. And of course, I want also thanks to the organizer for this wonderful meeting and to allow to me to present here this result. So today I will tell you about some recent results obtained by combining small angular neutron scattering with AC susceptibility measurements that allow us to uh, address some long, very standing questions regarding the some hysteretic history effect in the that are observed in the pinning response of the vortex lattice and the underlying reorganization of the vortex lattice structure. So uh, let me present first the main collaborator of this work. Uh, Monster Skilsen uh, has collaborated in all the SANS measurements, so all the SANS experiments. This is Victoria Beckeris, my, my colleague, and Mariano Marciali, my PhD, is the main author of all the work that I will present. Uh, so let's begin with a very brief introduction. Uh, well, as you know here in this audience, uh, in vortex matter with uh, weak and random distributed pinning at low temperature and field, the stable phase is an ordered black glass with elastic correlation lengths much, much larger than the lattice parameter, free of dislocation and with a very low effective pinning, but with increasing field and temperature, the system undergoes an order disorder transition to a disordered glass with correlation length of the order of the lattice parameter, uh, full of dislocations and even disclinations. So in the case of very clean material, has niobium diesel and I crystal, the most of the phase diagrams is occupied by the ordered phase, this order disorder transition lies very near the superconducting normal transition. And here there is a transitional region where there is a sudden increase in the effective pinning. And the fingerprint of this sudden increase is the well known peak effect. So all these phases are glasses, and therefore a metastable configuration are expected to hold in all the phase diagram. And uh, so this, this intermediate configuration should be related with some kind of intermediate disorder and that will produce some kind of intermediate effective pinning. So this intermediate effective pinning, we expect that could be measured but has an intermediate critical current in transport experiment or some intermediate AC penetration depth in AC susceptibility experiment, but this is not so easy in normal transport experiment because the experimental transport currents move vortices and so some dynamic reorganization is produced by the self, by the experiment itself. And moreover, uh, vortices that enter the sample can contaminate the vortex system with uh, an additional metastable disorder configuration. So to avoid all this problem, a non-invasive technique is needed, has uh, ultra-fast transport or linear easy susceptibility in the Campbell regime. And in, in with this kind of technique, a lot of intermediate responses are observed. So uh, the scope of our work, the general scope is to answer this very general question. Are these intermediate responses related with bulk vortex lattice configuration with intermediate degree of disorder? And what is the nature of this disorder in each case? So to address this general question, we perform combined experiment in way to, to explore the bulk vortex lattice structure that is uh, um, measure the typical size of the ordered domains in the vortex lattice and well and, and the effective degree of pinning. Uh, so uh, the technique to prove the vortex lattice order is the small angular neutron scattering or SANS. Uh, so this is a sketch of a typical experimental setup with the collimated neutron beam uh, nearly parallel to the DC field that is to the vortex direction. So in a case of a perfect lattice, or indeed in the black glass situation, uh, the intrinsic uh, diffraction pattern is expected to have uh, ideal black points 
in when uh, in the la in the black conditions, but uh, and well in a imperfect lattice with dislocations, the black uh, the intrinsic black peaks are expected to broaden in some black spots, and the width of the black spot is related with the correlation length with the typical size of the ordered domains in the black in the in the lattice. So um, in this experiment, we can observe the six typical spots, but we will focus in one of these spots. And we, because in this setup, the best resolution is along the field direction, so we will rotate the sample around the black condition and record the rocking curve. And the width of the rocking curve is related with the correlation length, but of course, we have to deconvolute by the over experimental resolution in, an exper in a real experiment. And the intensity of the neutron peaks are proportional to the single vortex form factor that is strongly temperature dependent. Uh, and well, and to measure, to prove the effective pinning, we measure in the linear Campbell regime. So Gianni Blatter gave a very good explanation in the previous talk. This is, um, so vortices perform very small oscillation inside each potential well. And this AC penetration depth, that is the Campbell penetration depth, uh, is uh, easily related with the in-phase component of the AC susceptibility. So remember in the rest of the talk that uh, a more negative chi prime is related with the shorter AC penetration and a stronger pinning. And when uh, the susceptibility increase, we will talk about a weaker pinning. So remember this relationship in the rest of the work. So we have performed a series of uh, several experiments in several neutron facilities uh, to combine these two techniques. Uh, the samples that we use are large single crystal, um, and this is the phase, gram uh, the phase diagram corresponding to our sample. Here is the transitional region. This is the suitable range to perform good sense observation. We can perform some measurements with the low statistic up to this temperature, but we are not able to measure directly the neutron signal here because the single, the single vortex for factor uh, vanish at that temperature. So it's very difficult. Uh, so the first question we want to, to, to answer is the following. We have observed some years ago uh, that inside the transitional region, above the peak effect, after applying a shaking AC field with a large AC field, after applying this shaking, the linear response is intermediate between the more stronger pinning response and the weakest, the, the weakest pinning response. And this intermediate response is independent of the previous response before shaking and is temperature dependent. So uh, the question is, are these intermediate response related with some kind of stable bulk vortex lattice configuration with intermediate degree of disorder? So I, in the last vortex workshop, I uh, explained in detail this experiment. And here I, I will just review the, the main results. So uh, here is the um, uh, the um, feel cool, the typical linear feel cool uh, response with strong pinning, and so we we measure the linear response. We go to very low temperature and we record this rocking curve. That is a weak rocking curve, and we can deconvolute with our experimental resolution and keep some extract some. L resolution, some uh, correlation length of, of vortex lattice. But if we cool to some temperature and here we stop and we shake the system, after shaking the linear response is this red one. I mean, the, the, the effective pinning is decreased. So we cool the system and when we measure the rocking curve, it's a narrow curve that is exactly over kernel resolution. I mean, we are not able to measure any a uh, correlation length that is much, much larger than over resolution. And both the linear response and the rocking curve is independent of the temperature where we apply the shaking field. 
And this curve is reversible in warming after warming and heating the uh, or cooling the, the system. So we understand that this is the bra glass, the stable bra the stable bra glass configuration at these temperatures that we are is rich after shaking at that temperature. So the the situation is very different is we shake the system in this small region above the peak, the maximum here. So I will uh, zoom this region in the next picture. So here is the field cool configuration and uh, the, the response of the field cool configuration. This is the response obtained after shaking the system at low temperature. That is the bra glass response. And now uh, this is the rocking curve corresponding to the field cool. And now we cool down, but we stop here in the transitional region. We apply a shaking AC field, and after shaking, the, si the system, the pinning decrease, but it not until here, but to some intermediate response. The response is exactly the same if we shake the system, but coming from this response. So after shaking from here, the responses are exactly the same. So we cool in any case, in, in each case, and the rocking curves are also very similar and show an ordering relative to the field cool configuration, but a disordering if we compare with the rocking curve that we obtain just by warming up to the same temperature and cooling down without any shaking. So uh, in that experiment, we have shown that uh, applying shaking field in the transitional region drive the system to configuration which intermediate disorder that is bulk that has an intermediate correlation length independent of the initial configuration and that in this region shake can order on either disorder the vortex lattice creating or annihilating dislocation, vortex lattice dislocation and of course uh, that's in case of we shake the system below the peak the shaking just order the vortex lattice, annihilating the dislocation and producing the black glass configuration. So uh, now the second open question is, okay, but if we do any dynami dynam dynamical assistance, a lot of intermediate response can be also be observed. So this, uh, this is an example, this is uh, the field cool configuration, that the black glass configuration that I showed previously, and all these are intermediate responses that are just obtained by cooling and warming the system from different lower temperature. So uh, in all the cases, this warming curve show an effective pinning lower than the cooling procedure, and the lower the minimum temperature, the lower the effective pinning in the warming response. So, uh, well, the question in that case is we, uh, we observe this spontaneous softening of the effective pinning without applying in any dynamical assistance. So, uh, is this spontaneous softening related with some kind of spontaneous vortex lattice ordering? At is this spontaneous ordering? Uh, related with the cleaning of dislocation, some spontaneous cleaning of dislocation. In that case, if we measure the correlation length in a warming procedure and compare with the same configuration at, at, at the same temperature in the cooling, we should observe a different rocking curve, a different neutral intensity or something like that. So we try to do that in a second experiment. And here I show you two different group of rocking, cu rocking curve. This is, these are recorded the lowest temperature that can be attained in an ILL, where we perform this experiment. This is the field cool and the black glass rocking curve. And th this, uh, those are the same curves, but at a higher temperature. There are not significant difference, just the intensity is lowest because the temperature is higher. And the blue curve correspond to a warming, th to the, the rocking curve, measure after warming the system from 3 Kelvin to this temperature, and at least up to this temperature, there is not significant difference between the cooling and warming configuration without shaking. They looks very similar. So we are not able to measure the rocking curve at higher temperature because the 
experimental time diverge. So we will just measure the maximum intensity of each peak that is inversely related with this width at several temperatures. So here are the results. The black are cooling procedures, uh, measuring cooling procedures. This, the, the blue in warming procedure, and this is those corresponding in the black glass. This is in logarithmic scale. And the continuous line are the dependence is expected uh, from the temperature dependence of the single vortex for factor. So we are not observing significant difference both in width and intensity between cooling and warming configurations. So it seems that the, this thermal cycle do not involve a significant annihilation of vortex lattice dislocation, but however, there is a very important difference in the pinning response. So okay, so we, we want to check, I mean, this, this, this measurement has, has compared the warming and cooling response of the more disordered configuration that we can obtain, this field cool configuration, but we know how to produce configuration with intermediate dislocation density. We know how to do that. We need just to shake the system in the transitional region, and we will obtain some intermediate density so we can, we can ask what happens when we cool and warp these intermediate configurations. So we do that. Here we have, oops, sorry. Here I have three different configuration obtained by shaking the system at three different temperatures in this region. So this is the typical field cool warming curve. And these are the cooling, the warming response of each one of these cooling. So we can observe that in all the cases, there is a very a lower effective pinning in the warming relative to the cooling response, but there is a correlation between each warming response and the previous cooling response. So it seems that there is a memory of the original dislocation density. I mean, not all the dislocations were clean uh, after warming and cooling. Uh, so the conclusion of this part is that the spontaneous thermal ordering seems to not involve a significant cleaning of dislocation, or at least there is a memory of the original dislocation density. Well, the last question that I can will address regard the peak effect. So here, I show you that a black glass configuration, and up the, uh, above the onset of the peak effect, there is the softening of the pinning that is indeed the peak effect that we know has the peak effect. And when we cool again, obviously here the pinning is stronger relative to the this one. So this spontaneous enhancement of the effective pinning here is related with some spontaneous vortex lattice disorders because we are not applying any shaking here. And the question is, does this disorder, this increase of this disorder imply some kind of creation, spontaneous creation of dislocations at the peak effect? In that case, we'll should obs we cannot observe the vortex lattice here, but we can cool and ask if this configuration has a shorter correlation length than the Bragg glass, than the original Bragg glass. And if not, we can also ask if in a second warming process, will we have some memory of this intermediate dislocation density if there is. So we know that in that case, we have not observed, I mean, the, the, the rocking curve corresponding to this curve is in our resolution. So we are not observing an, some dislocation density. At least we are not able to observe a dislocation density just, be, just uh, for, for warming and cooling in the transitional region. So let's say let's say let's uh, see what happened with the with the memory. So here we warm the system up to different temperatures in the transitional region, and we cool again. And we ask what happened with the second warming process. So I will first see the first one up to this 
higher temperature here. So the response reproduces the Bragg glass response, response. So the Bragg glass response is recovered after cooling and warming. So if there is some disordering, this disordering is recovering during the thermal process. The, the response is exactly the same. Uh, well, that's not the case when we warm the system above this t, t star, near the bottom of the peak effect, or here, when, when there is a memory of the previous disordering. So we think that up to, uh, above this temperature, perhaps spontaneous dislocation, irreversible are created. So the, the conclusion for this part is that below this T star, in the transitional region, but not in the bottom of the peak effect, uh, the spontaneous thermal reordering does not involve a significant creation of dislocation, or at least there is a memory of the initial black glass configuration. Uh, so we have proposed a picture in this, in this paper uh, uh, that's quite sure that higher plastic energy barrier uh, that involve uh, creation or engineration of dislocation needs some dynamical assistance to be overcome. So it's very difficult to create or annihilate significantly dislocation without a dynamical assistance. But we propose some elastic reordering, short range elastic re reordering inside each correlation volume that is not very affecting the sun's measurements, but affect drastically the linear effective pinning uh, in the Campbell regime. This week I discussed with other colleagues, for example, with Roland Wheeler, the possibility to that this, this effect has another or an alternative explanation, uh, with some kind of theory similar to that exposed by Gianni Blatter uh, in the previous work. I, it's possible, so theoretical model or alternative explanation are welcome. That's just a proposition. Uh, well, thanks for your attention. <laughs>